Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back for another video. We got How Good Was Moses Malone? Uh, I think a few of you guys uh, told me some other legends I can react to for us, like uh, checking on how good they were back in the day. Uh, some of you said Moses Malone. So I don't know why I kept forgetting about doing Moses Malone. Um, so we're just going to get right into Moses Malone. Pause. Uh, but yeah, subscribe if you're new and all the good stuff. And um, let's get into the video. Moses Eugene Malone, also Eugene. known as the chairman of the boards, and for good reason. Moses was a dominant force offensively and an all-time great rebounder. Moses was so much better than many NBA fans hey, realize, hey, hey, hey. there's a number of reasons for this that go beyond simply his production. If I had to pick the biggest like reason, that. I would say it's his legacy's identity crisis. Throughout his career, Moses played for nine different teams, Damn. which is extremely rare even for a role player. But for an all-time great player, it's almost completely unheard of. Just look at the amount of different jerseys and numbers that this guy Damn. wore. The thing is, when a player isn't associated with a specific franchise, it affects his legacy and means that he isn't often remembered as fondly because he can't be claimed by one fan base as their own. Regardless of the reason, Moses is still criminally underrated. But just how great was he exactly? And where does he rank among the greatest centers of all time? To answer that, let's take it back to the beginning of his career. The 6'10 Moses was drafted in the third round of the 1974 like ABA draft by the Utah Stars. He was selected relatively late and straight out of high school, which wasn't a very common occurrence. In fact, oh. at the time, the New York Times even called him the first high schooler to go straight to the pro. I forgot he was the very first player to come straight out of high school. Moses Malone. Damn, I forgot about that. In modern basketball history, he immediately proved he was more than ready. As only a 19-year-old in his rookie season in the ABA, Moses averaged 18.8 points, 14.6 rebounds, and 1.5 blocks on 57 15 rebounds a game? This was good enough Damn. to make him an ABA All-Star in only his first year. The Stars eventually lost in the semifinals to the Denver Nuggets in six games. Unfortunately, Moses would not be enough to save the Stars franchise from their massive debt. The Stars organization folded, and as a result, they sold Malone to the spirits of St. Louis. But he wouldn't get very comfortable there either. After only playing half of his second season in the league, the ABA and NBA merged before the beginning of his third season as a pro. The Spirits were not among the teams selected to join uh. the NBA, meaning Malone would once again be available in a draft. This time, it was the NBA-ABA merger draft, where he Jazz. was selected by the New Orleans Jazz, before he was swapped to the Portland Trailblazers for a regular draft pick before the Blazers then experienced salary concerns and then traded him to the Buffalo Braves. Damn, I'm honestly starting to feel sorry for Moses away. just writing this script. Malone's third season finally began with the Braves, but they were only playing him about three minutes a game, oh, which wow. had the young Malone extremely frustrated. I bet. As a result, after only two games with the Braves, they traded him to the Houston Rockets for two future first round picks. Moses was barely into his third season as a pro and he had already been claimed by six different teams. The good news is Damn. that Malone would finally find a somewhat long-term home with the Rockets, and the frustrated and determined 21-year-old was ready to make all of the doubters look stupid. And he <laughs> would do just that. He played 80 games for the Rockets at about 31 minutes a game, and he averaged 13.5 points, 13.4 rebounds, and 2.5 blocks double double machine shooting. They eventually lost in the conference finals, but this was just a taste of what the Rockets and Moses were capable of. The following season, he averaged 19.4 points, 15 rebounds, and 1.3 blocks on 50% shooting. The only problem was that this year was cut short to just 59 games played when he got a stress fracture in his right foot, and his huh. year was done. But when he would return healthy the following season, the prime of his but monster his own rebound again. Going back up. Uh, rebound again. 1982 was his best for Houston, and in that stretch, he averaged 27.4 points. 15.4 rebounds and 1.5 blocks on 52% shooting. He also won the league MVP award in two of those seasons. This includes a performance against the New Orleans Jazz where he pulled down 37, 37 rebounds in a single game. Rebounds. In the 1981-82 season, he put up 31.1 points and 14.7 rebounds in what was arguably the best year of his career. Let me put those numbers in perspective. No one in all of the years since has matched those two averages in a single season. Not Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, not Shaquille O'Neal, not Hakeem, or Giannis. No one. Statistically, he stood out far beyond his peers. 
From 1979 to 1985, he won six rebounding titles in seven years, including five straight. His six rebounding titles is the third most in NBA history, behind only Dennis Rodman and Wilt Chamberlain. And his streak of five years is the second longest streak ever behind only Rodman. The insane rebounding numbers he put up were not a product of his era either. In the modern NBA, teams are averaging around 45 rebounds a game. In Wilt Chamberlain's era, teams were averaging anywhere from 53 to 73 Damn. rebounds a game. And in Moses Malone's era, teams were averaging around 43 rebounds a game. Malone's era put him at a rebounding disadvantage, yet despite playing in the era with the fewest available rebounds in NBA history, Moses still put up video game numbers. With all of this being said, when it came to elite teams, the Rockets were playing in one of the most top-heavy eras in basketball history. The closest they came to winning the championship with Moses leading the way was in the 1981 season, but they lost in the NBA Finals in six games to the Larry Bird-led Celtics. If of Moses course. was going to win an NBA championship in that era, he was going to need an even more talented supporting cast. Enter the summer of 1982 free agency. After much negotiating, Moses Malone was heading east to the talented and powerful Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Sixers. Waiting for him there was the still lethal man known as Dr. J, Julius Irving. With players like Moses, the Doctor, Maurice Cheeks, Andrew Tony, and Bobby Jones, the 76ers were ready to take the NBA by storm. And that's exactly what they did. They steamrolled hey. the league, finishing with a 65-17 and 17 record. And although many contributed, Moses was clearly the best player throughout putting up averages of 24.5 points, 15.3 rebounds, and two blocks on 50.1%. His year-long performance earned him his Damn. third MVP award and his second straight. Moses is still the only player in NBA history to win back-to-back -back MVP awards on two separate teams. Their wow. dominance continued into the playoffs as they went on an 11-1 run throughout the postseason, including a four-game sweep of Kareem and Magic's Lakers in the NBA Finals. What? In those finals, Moses absolutely destroyed Kareem and the Lakers, putting up 25.8 points, 18 We're rebounds, 1.5 steals, and 1.5 blocks on 50.7% shooting, and he was rewarded the Finals MVP. When we think of the era of 1980s basketball, we understandably think of Magic's Lakers and Bird Celtics. But it's also important for us to remember Can't forget that about Moses. in those years is Can't one forget of the about Moses. Of all time, the 1983 Philadelphia 76ers. Malone played for many years after this and was certainly productive, but this was without question the highlight of his career. He finished out his long-lasting career also playing for Washington, Atlanta, Milwaukee, and a return to Philly and San Antonio. In his career, he had 11 straight seasons where he averaged at least 20 points and 10 rebounds. Damn. He was a 13-time All-Star, made 8 All-NBA teams, and 2 All-Defense teams. He's 9th on the NBA's all-time scoring list, and he's 5th on the all-time rebounds list. His game was made up of incredible stamina, and he played with hustle, heart, and strength. So just how great was Moses Malone really? Well, I'll put it this way. Many people compare the greatest centers of all time, and usually oh, the names Will. that people bring up are guys like Will Chamberlain, Karim Bill Russell, Shaquille O'Neal, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Akeem Olajuwon. I am telling you with complete conviction that Moses Malone belongs in that group. You really Let me do. know in the comment section where you rank Moses Malone among the greatest centers of all time. Thanks for watching as always, <clears throat> make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Alright, peace. Man. One thing I got to say, can't forget about Moses. Can't forget about Moses. Man. That's crazy. He, he always averaged a double-double. That's crazy. I don't, I don't know what else to say, man, but he is one of the greatest centers of all time. I don't care what nobody say. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Let me know what you think about the video. And um, I'm out. Peace.